Welcome into the NFL on Fox podcast presented by Verizon. I'm Dave Hellman, and I hope you're charging into your weekend like Debo Samuel charging through the Giants secondary. That's where we're at on this Friday morning. If you missed Thursday night football, I just summarized it for you. Sometimes the NFL is shockingly predictable. Sometimes you know exactly what's going to happen in a game before it gets played. That's what happened Thursday night. New York Giants go to visit the San Francisco 49ers and they get beat down 30 to 12, a third straight easy win for Kyle Shanahan and his San Francisco 49ers. And honestly, we're just continuing a theme of the season. The the scary thing about this 49ers team is I'm not sure we have yet to see their final form. This is still a team that is in my opinion, not completely clicking the way we've seen them do before. And that should be a scary thought for the NFL, certainly for the NFC, because again, they win a game at home by 18 points against the giants from beginning to end. Just, I don't know that the game was ever in doubt after maybe trading field goals on the first couple of possessions, Brock Purdy continues to do this Brock Purdy thing where throughout the game, you say, eh, I don't know, man, not, not really looking the dynamic, not really looking as sharp as he could. And then the game ends and you see that he's got through 310 yards through for two touchdowns. Didn't turn the ball over, uh, had a wonderful completion percentage. I don't know if you want to call it a dominant night, but certainly a night that's going to get the job done against the vast majority of the teams that he plays. I thought it was very impressive Wink Martindale, Giants defensive coordinator, known for bringing blitzes, known for putting pressure on quarterbacks. He went after Purdy. He blitzed him a ton. I saw on social media during the game that Brock Purdy got blitzed more in this game than he had during all of his starts during the regular season last year. It actually, it worked. Brock Purdy, again, looked off, had two or three turnover worthy plays on the first possession of the game. Kyle Shanahan kind of adapts and, lays out a very quarterback friendly game plan. You see a lot of short passes. You see a lot of yak Debo Samuel finished with 80 yards of yak in this game. Absolutely took it over six catches for 129 and a touchdown again, Christian McCaffrey. I laughed. There was a sequence in the first half Brock Purdy converts third and 15 and a third and 13 on the same drive without throwing the ball past the line of scrimmage dumps it off to Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey and lets them get the job done. If I sound like I'm disparaging Brock Purdy, I promise you that's not my goal. My point is to emphasize that's how good this Niner team is. Your quarterback doesn't need to be clicking on all cylinders for this team to be very, very impressive. They've scored 30 points. Actually, they've scored exactly 30 points in all of their games. Uh, that's 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 kind of strange, but it happened. Brandon Ayuk sits out of this game with a shoulder injury. I think probably a smart call against an overmatched opponent. And it didn't matter. Again, Debo Samuel does his thing. Christian McCaffrey does his thing. George Kittle got involved in the biggest way we've seen this season. Seven catches for 90 yards. Purdy did find him on some really nice completions a couple times in this game. But my only point is there's so much talent on this team. I just don't think there are very many defenses that can cope with the Niners as long as Brock Purdy's not turning the ball over. And then to his credit, uh, I've just kind of given him all these backhanded compliments to Purdy's credit in the fourth quarter. He does make the play that finally puts this game away for good. Martindale brings pressure at him again. It's worked throughout the night. Why not try it for a, a 30th time or however many times and Brock Purdy made him pay. Debo runs a sluggo one-on-one coverage looked like if it wasn't cover zero, it was something similar one-on-one coverage all over the board and Purdy lights him up for a touchdown to take, to put, put the game well out of reach. So again, if you're taking care of the ball, hitting two or three shots like that, a game and letting your stars do the rest, this is going to be a very hard team to beat. The Niners really haven't broken a sweat to this point in the season. Meanwhile, on the other side, this looked exactly like what we predicted it would look for the New York Giants. And and I don't really blame them. This is a tough spot. On the road, on a short week, ravaged by injury, your best offensive player, Saquon Barkley, is out with an injury. Andrew Thomas, the left tackle, sits. Ben Bredesen sits. 
And yes, as a matter of fact, going against one of the best pass rushes in the league, the Giants offensive line looked like it was missing multiple starters, completely overwhelmed. Daniel Jones had no time. It's not even like the Niners racked up a, a bunch of sacks and a bunch of gaudy numbers. Daniel Jones is incredibly, incredibly athletic. He was able to get away from pressure, but the Niners still hit him six times and sacked him twice. He was getting rid of the ball fast. And when he was under pressure, the ball wasn't going anywhere. Some bad overthrows, a bad performance on, on third down three of 12 on third down. Just again, couldn't get anything going. Can't find a semblance of a running game without Saquon Barkley. No offense to Saquon, but I imagine it wouldn't have looked that much different with him in there. This is just a loaded 49ers team. So we see where we see where this goes from here for New York. Not the season or not the start to the season they envisioned. But and I, I hate to sound like I'm letting them off the hook, but I think this was expected. You start your season against Dallas and San Francisco in the first three weeks of the season. I just don't know how many level-minded people expected this to go a different way. Like, sure, maybe you didn't see the 40 to nothing loss to the Cowboys coming, but I certainly saw two L's on the schedule for this team going up against those guys. I think the Giants have, have a solid roster. Again, we talked about it before the season. I thought they were ahead of schedule last year. The challenge was going to be to try to stay ahead of schedule. Kind of feels like reality is catching back up to them. They made the playoffs last year. It was a cool story. They get two big opportunities in primetime games to show whether they are on the level of the NFC's elite and their point differential is now minus 58. It, it just is what it is. It's it, point differential doesn't decide where your season's going in week three. There's plenty left to play for, but this was, it's just a stark reminder of where they stand compared to the teams that we knew going into the season were going to be really good. They get a weekend off to get healthier and they need it. I was, I was sitting here trying to come up with a feel good storyline for the giants say, Hey, you get the weekend off. You get a long time to rest. You get Saquon back. You get Andrew Thomas back. No reason to feel too down. And that's still true, but it doesn't get a whole lot easier when the giants get back to work on Monday. It's Seattle. It's at Miami. It's at Buffalo all in a row. Again, teams that we consider to be contenders or at least playoff competitors. Got to find a way to win one of those, I think, or, or this season could get away from you, Giants.